Jeff Meeks and Chris Austin invite you to watch your favorite sports event at the Batter's Box at 43 Hermitage Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee. The Batter's Box offers shuttle service to all Titans home games. It's a great place for friends to gather for the game and after the game. So check out the Batter's Box Bar and Grill and thanks again for sponsoring the show. Microcasting for your city. Talkopolis. And welcome back, everybody, to Political Soup. We finally got these guys settled down <laughs> on the health care without needing a health care provider. So I'm, I'm kind of pleased with that. We go to our second segment today. We're going to talk a little bit about, as we have already, the national debt ceiling limit. The, uh, the Republicans in the House uh, passing today legislation that is a compromise, uh, affectionately known, I guess, as the Boehner Compromise, throws everything into the seat of the Senate to pass a budget. One thought that has crossed my mind in the past couple of days, gentlemen, is this just another case of bad parenting? Well, Joe, Joe first of all, the House is going to pass a bill today to raise the debt limit for about 90 days. That's what I call bad parenting. They're not fixing the problem. Well, they can't. They've just kicked it down the road forever. No, no, they're not kicking it down the road. They're kicking it, they're saying we'll have 90 days for us to negotiate what the what the um, what kind of spending cuts we'll have. That's what that's what the Republicans want because or tax the, reform. because the president, the president has said that he will cut spending. Now we're going to find out. But here's what's more interesting to me. Forget Obama for a second. The Senate, run by the Democrats, has not passed a budget in four years. The media just gives them a pass and says, that's okay. That's the most irresponsible thing I can think of for a House of Congress, or you got the House and the Senate. I don't know that the Senate will, will pass Boehner's compromise, if they will sign on to it. Now, so then what happens is, in the next two weeks, we reach the debt limit. And we, I think there's a good probability that they're going to sign on because this, this allows for that 90 days to have the negotiation, to have the discussion. And with the Republican ideological right softening and demonstrating a, will, a willingness to have a compromise and talk about it, I mean, you're hearing all sorts of members, uh, Republican members of Congress talking about, okay, we'll come to the table, which is what we need to see. That I think, this, I think this, there's a good likelihood that the Senate will pass that bill to get through this, this negotiating period. And then, then everything's on the table, and it's going to be very fascinating to see. The president is in a very powerful position. He comes off a powerful re-election, great inaugural speech and he is going to he's going to hold the line on certain things and we'll we'll, we'll see what happens over the well, next Well, he's already gotten his 800 billion dollar tax increase without giving up a dime of spending cuts. So now the question is going to be And he said that he said I'm running to ensure that the top 2% pay their fair share in and taxes. He got, and, he got and, he, it. and he got it. Yeah. So now what we're going to find and, out and elections is, have consequences, Crom, and one of them is that the yeah, president the House, won this thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're not a dictatorship, Chip. I know you'd like for us to be, but the House <laughs> the House was won by the Republicans. And the people who voted for the members of the House didn't vote for higher taxes, didn't vote for crushing our economy. Here's what's interesting. If you are a spouse in California and, you're, and your spouse is in the top income tax bracket. Now, well, I'll move into federal state. We know. Here's we, what's interesting. The very first dollar you earn, if you're, say you're a real estate agent, the very first dollar you earn, you're in the 71% tax bracket on your first dollar of income. And Obama wants more. Obama wants more. How much is enough? Is 110 percent sufficient? You can't get 110 percent. Can you get 100? Well, now wait a second. Well, could you get a? Now wait. Could you get 100? Theoretically, but that's not. No, no, no. Happen. Who would work? Who would work if their tax rate were 100 percent? Well, you're right. You're okay. Right. Thank right. you. I, I believe and, they've tried that in the nation over well, they, yeah, across over the across, big ocean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, so what's going to be really interesting now is to see what happens. Because tax rates are now incredibly high. Because people don't realize part of what Obama got in this recent tax increase is the, Medicaid, the Medicare tax is now 3.8% on every dollar of income. So even if you're a movie star making $20 million, guess what? You're paying 3.8% on just Medicare. So in order, to, in order to have coverage when you're over 65, theoretically, you're going to be paying seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year for your premium. Isn't that interesting? And that's considered to be by the progressives fair, which I find an interesting, interesting argument. You'd be better off to just call around and get a four hundred dollar MRI. There you go. Save ex your money. Ex exactly. I mean seriously. Exactly. 
Theoretically. Theoretically. Yeah. Theoretically. Yeah. Well, practically, I did it. Oh, that's good. That's, that's, that's yeah, the that's fun actual part. practical. I so anyway, so what's time. going to be interesting is the Senate's now going to have to either, they're either going to have to come up with their own their, bill or they're going to pass what the House has. What the House has in order to extend it 90 days. And, and then if they extend it 90 days, in that bill it says the Senate must pass a budget, right. which they have refused right. to do for four years. Right. So I hope that they agree, and then I hope that when Obama submits his budget, then we'll get to actually see what he wants to do. And we'll see what the House has said, what the Senate said, and the President, and yeah. we'll negotiate that out within yeah. these 90-day periods. Yeah. Now, when all these guys get together, one of the things, <laughs> the, the option is the House passes, the Senate doesn't, debt ceiling hits. Then what happens? Who's at fault then? Who's here, at fault then, here, Chip? Wait a minute. Before we get to fault, here's my question. The debt ceiling hits. We are, quote, broke. We're whatever. Whatever term you want to use. We're not paying the bills that we've incurred. We're not paying the bills. That we've incurred. Government starts to shut down, et cetera. It doesn't. It doesn't well, work. That, what, that isn't okay. what will happen. But theoretically, That isn't what happen. When the When the budget, when the debt ceiling is, is not increased, if it is not increased, the revenue doesn't stop. Okay. So it still has it has to balance the budget at that point, right. it and it would be it, it would makes be decisions as to what we're going to pay. Yeah, okay. it would be, it would be forced to do that. But let's be clear about something: the Republicans in the House, if they do what they say they're going to do today, will extend the 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 debt for another ninety days. If the Senate refuses to go along, my question to my good friend Chip is: Is it the House Republicans who are at fault for the debacle that? Is supposedly going to happen, or is it the Senate Democrats who are well, responsible? Well, I think the other the other point is that what does the Senate propose? Do they accept the House bill that, that that gets passed today in the House, or do they propose something else? And there's a negotiation, and we don't know until we see what they're what, what they're going to what they're going to do. And therefore, I don't want to assign fault to the Democrats or the Republicans until we see what they're what they're going to do. The point of this, and I keep coming back to it, you have this hard line. There's got to be a compromise. There's got to be a discussion. And the president has said all along in the campaign, one, there's going to be tax reform particularly for the top 2%, but we also, he, he also put spending cuts on the table. The Republicans said no. It is all about, there, there will be no tax reform or, or, or tax cuts for the, uh, tax increases, excuse me, for the, the top 2%. It, there have to be spending cuts. And the president said, I won this election with 300 plus electoral college votes, a popular vote, and I'm going to hold the line. And he won that in the, in, in the, in the last debate. Now we're going to see over the next 90 days, or really the next couple of weeks, whether the Senate comes up with a bill or not. And he got $800 billion of tax increases. Which he said he was going to ask for. Chip, he, you seem to. You seem to. What's interesting well, about where's the compromise, Chip? You keep he, saying that there ought to be a compromise. I understand. The point is, this what is the, what, what he got the, elected on. All right, what he are the won that. He won that. He won that battle a couple weeks ago. And what's interesting, the Republicans would not have gone along with him had they known that they were in the they were in the hot seat. The, the, the American people were for it. The president got elected. So now the next the, the next question is, there will be negotiations on spending decreases. There well, will we'll be. see. We'll see. Well, I'm I'm confident that you'll you'll see that. Here, here's my here's my concern. Yes, the president won the election. Was it a mandate? I don't think 51 percent of the popular vote is a mandate. I understand. My question is, what I'm looking for uh, is a president who will represent more than the 51 percent. I need somebody who's going to represent 65, 70 percent of the country. Um, I'm not looking for a representative who's going to represent only that 49 percent. Well, I don't, I don't even. There, I, there's, there's, there's got to be compromise, but guys, we and we talk compromise, but it ain't happening. Joe, here's, well, they here. did actually. That's wrong. No, the, just let me just quickly say, I think Boehner, uh, Speaker Boehner, did compromise. He put on. He said, okay, we, we, we read the handwriting on the wall. We will put a 90 day. We'll, we'll, we'll put 90 day compromise on the table so that the country does not. Uh, not pay its bills, and now we'll negotiate, and now we'll talk. So I, I commend the Speaker Boehner for putting that out there. I hope the Senate follows suit, ex accepts but, that. But it wasn't just that. It well, said, there were some other conditions. It said that it. Congress must pass a budget. Right. Do you think that's reasonable? Yes. Okay. So if the Senate won't agree to the terms of passing a budget, then you would agree that the Democrats are at fault. Well, let's wait and see what the Senate does. You you keep wanting to get me. You're trying to put me in a box to say the Senate is at fault. I won't say that. I want to see. I'll agree with you when we see that they're not stepping up and, 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 and doing what they need to do. But until then, we, the president said, got what he needed the other day. Speaker Boehner's giving us a, a window to have a discussion. We need to have, and we'll see what the Senate does. So, so if Crom changed to say, if the Senate <laughs> doesn't, you would agree that's, with that? That's what I said. Yeah. He said, I don't want, he don't want to be put in that box so that he can change his mind and say well, something different see, if I'll, they haven't. Well, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. You know, the only thing I can guarantee you that's going to happen in all this is come Feb uh, February, yeah, mm -hmm. come April 15th, 
Somebody's uh, paying the tax bills. Now, you know, you guys know tax season is right here on top of us. Let me tell you, our friends over at All & Cooper do a great job from everything from 1040s to business taxes and handling all your business accounting functions. That's our friends at All & Cooper. Check them out at allandcooper.com. That's A-U-L-L Cooper.com. When we come back, we'll find one more thing to make these two guys crazy. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting bruised in the middle of all this. Stay with us on Political Soup.